So carbohydrate in the diet, next slide. So this is a uh, Chinese teaching about live foods. If you mix in smoke and fire, cooking your food, your body will not walk in the dual pond, which is the liberation. The immortal body should be pure, clear spirit. So if you don't abstain from cooked food, then it becomes murky. Uh, and they're saying live food is key to the liberation process. Next slide, please. Okay. And this is about grains. I don't want to spend too much time in grains, but uh, I personally eat very, very little grains. Uh, and this is the Chinese teaching, bigu, avoid eating grains. And this goes back to Tao's teachings, 475 BC. Next slide. Okay, and I'm gonna point glucose, fructose, they're all not good for you. Next slide. Next two or three slides. Keep going, bounce through it a little bit. Okay, one more, one more, because I want to show uh, what, okay, next slide. If you have more fructose, it is not a substitute for glucose. There's a higher rate of insulin resistance, diabetes, uh, metabolic syndrome, heart disease, high blood pressure, obesity, gout, uh, brain inflammation, extremely important, accelerated aging. Next slide. So go low on the fructose. I avoid it, to be honest with you, because most of it's genetically engineered, okay? And we want to avoid inflammation of the brain. All these cause inflammation, and I'll touch on gluten and high carbohydrate diet, they all cause inflammation in the brain. High carbohydrate diet and gluten. Next slide, please. Okay, and blood sugar is a big issue. We want to eat in a way that our blood sugar optimum is 70 to 85 and it tends to increase with age. Last time I checked it with you it was about a week ago, it was 81. That's a good range, you know, 70 to 85. Optimum range above 100 is prediabetes. So I watched it very closely. Uh, in a few days, we're going to be doing a... Uh, uh, internet fast. Uh, we're not fasting from the internet, but we're fasting <laughs> on green juices. And we'll see people's blood sugars go way down because we dilute the juices in half. The higher your blood sugar, the faster your brain shrinks. Normally, the brain shrinks at 1% per year. Um, I'm not going to, it's, it's a topic that's extremely important. And I've talked a lot about it, but we're not going to talk about it now, maybe next year. I'll talk about brain shrinkage and how to prevent that. Next slide. Okay, so brain size loss. The higher your A1C, which is your sugar, glucose, or fructose connected um, to your hemoglobin, the higher rate of brain cell loss. And also the higher rate of depression. Next slide. So inflammatory carbohydrates, low and healthy fat messes with the mind. David Perlmutter, grain brain. Next slide. Okay, sugar is a problem. We already said it. Next slide. Now, here's the balance I want people to think about. We are unique individuals. We really have to consider that. It's very important. So plant fat, 25 to 45%. Now, I'm a person who needs a little less plant fat and a little less protein and a little bit more carbohydrate. And when I say carbohydrate, I'm talking about leafy greens, okay? <laughs> That's what carbohydrate is for me. Uh, leafy greens and uh, like what I had for lunch today, you know, bell peppers and avocados, things like that. Well, that's not carbohydrate, but it's that kind of thing. Leafy greens and certain vegetables around that like bell peppers. Okay, next slide. So how do you know it's working? It's how's your energy? So I've settled in on this diet because I have lots of energy at 78 years old. It's like energy is just like happening, you know? I explained the push-ups. that's my measure of energy. It's not to brag about, but you know, 1,350 push-ups, not bad, okay? And 
to be able to dance and move. The energy's there all the time. Then you know you've got on the right diet. It's real simple. You don't need anyone else to tell you. You have to tell yourself, how's my energy? How's my energy all the time? That's what we have to look at. Next slide, please. So this is the idea. The live food, vegan diet, helps you become a super conductor of the divine. It helps you meditate more deeply. It helps the spiritual energy called Kundalini flow. And you literally become a super conductor. Final slide. Here is, in each generation, we're given the right medicine for the world's repair. So the holistic life with veganism is the medicine for healing today's world. It really is the medicine for healing this world. Holistic life with veganism is the wave of the present and of the future on every level. Just think about that, because that's what you're all part of. And I bless you for having the wisdom to be part of that. Next slide. You might feel bad about the state of our world, but it, it'll be okay because people like you are on it. So I honor every one of you for being courageous and wise enough to look at this way of eating and creating a holistic way of life that helps you wake up to the truth of who you are, which does include meditation, does include exercise, it does include love and relationships. They're all kind of connected in. Next slide. If you want to get hold of me, I'm still actually seeing patients. Here I am in Israel, but I see people obviously over the internet. Doesn't matter because we can't get together. Info at treeoflife.edu. That's what we want. Um, that's the easiest. Or you can go to drcousins.com. Drcousins.com. That's pretty easy. Next slide. So there we go, holistic health practice, and we're doing a lot of teaching. That's much more what I'm doing, whole person health evaluation. Next slide. Okay, and you can go to Dr. Cousins. It's not an online store. I, I'm trying to correct this here a little bit. It, because we're not doing a store directly. It's, it is Dr. Cousins Global. Okay, drcousinsglobal.com. There we go. So I'm just sharing how to get in touch. Just go to, well, Dr. Cousins, uh, just go to drcousins.com. Easy, easy way or info at treeoflife.nu. So now we have time for questions and answers. Dr. Cousins, thank you so much. This has been truly amazing for all of us. And we are so, so appreciative of, of everything you've shared. And yes, we're, we're going to bring on some questions. And in order to do that, just want to make sure uh, everybody understands. Here's a little housekeeping on that. So for those of you that have questions, and I see some of you are already doing this, thank you. What we want you to do, we're only able to take questions uh, live. Uh, so anything that's that's in the chat box, we won't be able to answer that. But if you can, go ahead and raise your hand. And how you do that is, is on your Zoom, Zoom controls at the bottom of your Zoom screen, you'll see something that says reactions. You click on that reactions tab, and then a little thing in there will say raise hand. You click on raise hand, and we will see your hand raised. And we're going to take each hand raised in the order in which they came. We'll get to as many questions as we possibly can the, in the amount of time we have left allotted. And uh, we ask that everybody keep their questions brief and direct for Dr. Cousins. And uh, with that, uh, let's jump right in. The first question I have, the first hand raised we have is Alexandra. Alexandra, if you'd go ahead and unmute yourself. Thank you. Yes, I do. <laughs> Hello, thank you very much for this really beautiful talk and the information. Uh, I didn't know about Watas for oil. I just forgot about it and was all on green leaves trip. Uh, so I'm grateful for this little extra. Um, my question is um, with regards to post viral chronic constitutions like which I have chronic fatigue syndrome since some decades. Um, but there's also like 
post Epstein Barr, post COVID, whatever comes up. I wonder if you have experiences uh, how to, um, well, how to not have Let a question. Answer, answer your question. Yes. I see a lot of people who are post-viral, and we're not just talking COVID, okay? This, is, this has been going on for years, okay? The post-viral causes some major problems, particularly the mitochondria are uh, damaged by the virus. I do a lot of work in helping people rebuild their system. It takes a year or two because it's a, kind of a deep wound. It is healable. That's all I want you to hear. Wow. Yeah. Okay. But I have to work with you more in detail. It has to do with somehow the viruses attack the mitochondria in the brain, in the heart, in the whole body, and your energy just doesn't seem to ever recover, which is yeah. what you were saying. So okay. it is possible. That's the answer. But we have Very to, good to know. mitochondria. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so you can, you can reach you. I'm not looking for clients, but the truth is, it's like a special because so many people have it. And it goes on for so long. It goes on for years unless you can correct it. And also, I'm going to say one more thing. There's an imbalance of the hypothalamus pituitary pineal gland, very common. And we have to correct that too. All of it's pretty easy. Okay. So just go to info uh, at treeoflife.nu. And where do you live? Uh, actually, I think Alexandra is muted. Alexandra, if you... No, that's fine. It's fine. We can keep going. That's great. Okay, so we'll move on to the next one. Thank you, doctor. Um, so now up next, we have Sophia. Sophia, if you'd go ahead and unmute yourself, please. Hi, doctor. Thank you Hello, so doctor. much. Thank you so much for your generosity. Enjoy. I like to do this. It's fun. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, my question is about uh, hormonal imbalance. Uh, for many years, I have been, I'm 55, and I have been suffering from hot flushes and hair growth, few hair growth and their chin, my chin. So I wonder if there is a way to, uh, to get rid of them. Is there a supplement that I can take, a hormonal one? Or Well, honestly, like I would have mentioned before, the foundation is the live food vegan diet, okay? But these things are very specific. You learn a cow, okay? So when I work with somebody, I'll spend, and I'm not trying to advertise, I'm just telling what I do. I'll spend two and a half hours. I'm gonna figure out all the hormonal things that are off, whether it's the thyroid or the pancreas. Or, so there's multiple reasons why what could be happening. Do you understand what I mean? So from a holistic point of view, we have to look at everything at every level, physical, which is one level, emotional, mental, and also spiritual. So uh, again, I'm, I'm really telling you what I do with a deep holistic approach. Uh, and we have to look at every organ system, every hormonal glandular system in that process. So, Great, doctor. so there's no one thing for everybody. But Thank life you. is a good start. Okay, next. Sorry about that. Um, up next, we have Catherine. Catherine, if you'd go ahead and uh, unmute yourself. Aloha, Dr. Cousins and everybody. Hello, oh, Catherine. Yeah. Hi, I love that presentation. And I'm curious to know more about the carbohydrates. I always think of potatoes and carrots, but you were talking about greens, so... Could yeah. you? <laughs> I don't have carrots and potatoes, that's why. So leafy greens, all vegetables are primarily not 100%. It's not like bread, it's 100% carbohydrate. But these are very high carbohydrate foods. The leafy greens and pretty much all your vegetables. And then you have your more sweeter vegetables like beets and carrots and so forth. But you, you have broccoli, you have uh, cauliflower, you know, Brussels sprouts, we have a lot of things. They're all much higher in carbohydrates than, um, than we normally think of. That just opened up your dietary cuisine, which is good. Great, doctor, up next we have Joanne. Joanne, if you'd go ahead and unmute, please. We look forward to your question. 
and Joanne, I think. Yep, there we yeah. go. Hi, otherwise known as Yehuda Smahama. Hi, Dr. Cousins. Hello. Uh, hi. So um, I have several things going on, and I'm trying to ask the ones that would be possibly for the highest good of what everybody listening, uh, rather than a lot of specific things. Um, I have been a plant-based vegan for many years, um, probably since I'm about 18 years old, and and I grew up on the traditional Jewish, you know, meat and potatoes and stuff like that. But um, anyway, now I'm having challenges with, um, for one thing, this has been going on since I became vegan. I'm cold. Like right now, as I speak to you, it's 71 degrees in my room. My hands are ice cold. My toes are ice cold. I go to the ocean. People are wearing shorts and t-shirts and they look at me like I'm a lunatic because I'm wearing like a winter down coat. Okay. Somebody let me answer your question because it's common, okay? Uh -huh. Not that you are common, but your question is, okay? <laughs> so, because anyone who's choosing to be vegan life, food, you, you're already a unique person. You're already kind of like unique in, in, a, in a good way. Okay, so the answer is, in my clinical experience, low thyroid is a very common result it, 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 everything works well. The only thing it seems to happen that isn't what I like to see is a tendency for low thyroid on the uh, organic, veganic, live food diet. It's pretty easy to treat. And of course we don't prescribe over the internet like this, but that is totally typical. And you're giving me all the symptoms of low thyroid. now. Um, the problem we face too is that clinically speaking, you may test normal, but you got the symptoms of low thyroid. And that's the way I approach it is clinical because the thyroid tests are notoriously 50% inaccurate. So flip a coin, that's not so good. So really, uh, I think I've answered your question and, and your, those are clear symptoms. And unfortunately, well, fortunately, maybe that's the only main problem with organic veganic from a health point of view um, is the low thyroid is the tendency and it's easy to treat, but I can't really prescribe it over the, over the internet. Thank you. Okay. Up next week. No, no, there's hope. No, there's hope and it's really easy. Next slide. Next person. That's, that's encouraging. Thank you. Uh, up next, we have Benny with a question. Benny, if you'd go ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you, doctor. So fruit, frozen fruit, is that destroy anything? And on the cacao recommendation, beans, nibs versus powder. Okay, good, Benny. Um, I don't do frozen, okay? Because it does break the cell wall. And you, the best we can tell, it's probably you're losing about 50 to 75% of the nutritional value. It's not like cooking, but you lose a lot of the nutritional value. So I don't do much, I don't do frozen. Um, now, uh, the cacao, you, 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 I'm gonna talk in tablespoons because the form depends you. So one tablespoon of powdered cacao gives you pretty good dose. So, you know, one to three tablespoons, but one tablespoon is the minimum uh, that, of, you know, powdered cacao that you need to get the kind of more optimum effect. And that's probably the best way to do that. I, I like cacao and I, I think it's really good on multiple levels. And so, and I'll put it in a, like a, a hot drink of some sort, like tea or something like that. So that's probably the easiest, and you can figure out the exact form. But one tablespoon is the minimum, 750 milligrams. Okay. Good question. That, that, that's great, doctor. Thank you. And up next, we have Stephanie with a question. Stephanie, if you'd go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, Dr. Gabriel. Um, Hello, 
Yes. My question is for someone who is insulin resistant, I have um, PCOS and I've been pre-diabetic for um, many years because of that. I have a, a candida albicans overgrowth that's pretty strong and I have not been able to get rid of it after years and years of trying. Do you have any advice or anything for someone who's trying to get rid of candida? Well, I mean, it's you got a few things going on, right? Um, so I'm going to tell you what is safe and, you know, uh, is actually green juice, 50% diluted uh, is in general. So I'm not, I can't really prescribe medications, but generally, and that will also help with uh, prediabetes and maybe sometimes activate your uh, insulin resistant type situation into a good place. So a green juice fast for at least a week may give you some real relief because there's no not much sugar. So you dilute the juice in half. Um, that's the way it would go. Besides, you know, I would have to see you personally to get into the details. But as a general broad thing, it's a win-win unless you're 20 pounds underweight, which I don't think is the case. Okay, good. Great, doctor. Thank you but so no, much. No, there's hope. No, there's hope. Okay, get it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Up next, we have Robin. Robin, if you'd go ahead and unmute yourself for Dr. Cousins. Thank you. Hello, Dr. Cousins. Uh, Hello. What you said about the pain and suffering of animals is something I choose not to ingest resonated with me. My question, with, my question for you is, what is the optimal number for LDL? Is the only way to lower LDL with medication? What do you recommend? And is there any connection with um, LDL and plaque buildup in the carotid arteries? I don't think there's a connection with the LDL and, and the plaque buildup. I think that the problem is we are unique physiologies. And um, I don't know if the ranges are all that accurate that they're talking about. That's why I'm hesitant to say there's a particular range. Um, you want to look at the total picture of your, your lipid profile and see what that looks like. That's kind of why I'm, I'm very hesitant to say, here, here, here's a number, because it's a little complicated and people vary a lot. So what I would say is the more healthy you are, the better it is. And I don't recommend taking any drugs because they cause other imbalances. So if you're doing a live food vegan diet, 80%, and that's what your LDL is, then, okay, maybe go to 90% and see if there's a change. But generally speaking, you may want a little bit of shift in your diet. The trouble is we make our own cholesterol. We make our own LDLs. Uh, it isn't like so much from the external diet, but that does help a little bit. That's the best I can do on that. Okay, next question. Thank you, thank you. Uh, up next, we have Veronica. Veronica, if you'd go ahead and unmute yourself for your question for Dr. Cousins. Hello. Ooh. Thank you for a wonder hello. Thank you for a wonderful presentation. I've been actually following all your books, conscious eating, and everything for many years. I just want to give a little bit of background information uh, so that you can understand and maybe somebody else can relate. I usually find it really hard to find long-term raw living vegans. I happen to have been raised in Argentina and I'm 52 years old now, but 30 years ago I left Argentina the moment I turned 21, so that they would my parents would release me from a mental institution just because I wanted to eat fruits and vegetables. I never heard of a vegetarian, a vegan, or uh, embracing a raw living lifestyle. But the moment I got on that plane, I said, I don't want uh, meat, fish, or chicken. And I went cold turkey, raw vegan ever since. So I've been a raw vegan without any guidance for 30 years, except that then I started reading books and realizing there was a whole movement there. So I have literally worked meticulously on my diet for all that time. Um, I sprout my food. I follow very much what you do and advise. 
Uh, and I, I don't really know what else to do. I'm also a yoga instructor, so I meditate. I do all the right things in my life. I keep active. And uh, the number one reason I think I was guided to be this way is because I wanted food that gave me energy instead of taking it away from me, that made me uh, open up spiritually and be at the highest level of my optimal physical, emotional, and mental well-being. I'm telling you all this because... I find that also as I get older, I need less and less food for more and more energy. However, I'm having a really hard time uh, with a slow transit of food, especially because I turn away from any oils years ago. So my oils come in the form of avocados or nuts and seeds, mostly sprouted. And I bulk up in flame in my digestion because I have my, you know, my salad, my big salad with all the nutrients I need, mostly like you almost eating my big meal once a day. And sincerely, I'm sorry that I have to say this, but the bulk of my stools is almost 30 centimeters long and really wide in diameter. And it takes a lot of pain to go through my colon. Now, there is nothing wrong with me structurally, except I have very uh, interwining intestines. And um, now I'm disappointed because even though I do everything right, I'm in pain because it's so hard for me to transit that food. Okay, so just hold a second. First of all, I have met live food vegans in Buenos Aires. Okay. 30 years ago? Well, I, when I well, lived in there, 30 I 30 years ago, but 10 or 15. Second, yeah. there are some live food uh, uh, people from Argentina. I live in, in Canada. I never went back to Argentina. Sorry, I live in Canada. I never went back to Argentina. Okay. So I was yeah. talking about Argentina, but there are people from Argentina, you know, who are live food in the United States. And I think it would be very good for you to try to make contact with some of them so you're not alone. That's all I'm going to suggest. Your problems are complicated and, and beyond what I can answer in a, you know, a 30 second answer, except that I think you need some support. And I think um, connecting to other Argentinians would be good. I know in Florida, there's a whole bunch and, uh, and many of them have studied with me. And so that is what I would suggest is get, get connected. And I think there's work to be done, but we, I can't do it in a 30 second kind of suggestion, except find people who you feel comfortable with who are doing live foods and then they'll guide you to where you need to go. 